a fight that has eternal value a fight that is pro destiny are we together a fight that has rewards in this life and even in the life to come he said i have fought a good fight then he says i have finished my course and then he says i have kept the faith paul here redefines destiny for us in a very spectacular way number one he teaches us from this statement that life and destiny is a fight and that the earth here is a battleground it's a very powerful information he was teaching his son in the gospel he says i have fought a good fight so there is a dimension to life and destiny that requires warfare there is a dimension to life and destiny that is a fight now whether you are aware or not it does not change that reality number two he also teaches us that life is a race hallelujah it's a journey and akin to a race some versions will say i have finished the race he says i have finished my course so he gives us the picture of an athlete or someone on a journey are we together then he says i have kept the faith number three he teaches us that life is a gift and life is a treasure that must be guarded and protected that the possibility of losing your life and your destiny is there notice very carefully please back to kjv thank you he says i have in fact leave leave niv so that i can use it for the discussion i have fought a good fight so life is a battleground life will, re will require a fight and warfare number two he says i have finished the race you have to start to finish and then he says i have kept the faith this is very powerful because you see if you understand the various dimensions that are captured in life you will also know the kinds of preparation you need to make to face those dimensions are we together if you know that life is a fight and is a battleground then you will pay the price to learn the armory of a warrior you will not only learn about it you will pay whatever price it takes to make sure that the armory of a warrior one determined to win imagine with me for instance that someone maybe a military man is mandated to go to sambisa or one of these hideouts for terrorists and then he goes there with a short knicker like he's running and then a short knicker a t-shirt a bottle of water in his hands and his sneakers ready to fight the destination is correct but the preparation is wrong because what you are about to face there is not a race the people you meet in a warfare are not your competitors they are enemies in a race you don't have to fight enemies are we together you call a race competition not warfare but you call a battle warfare not competition so knowing the various dimensions i hope god is speaking to someone already knowing the various dimensions that are captured in life and destiny helps you to make sure that as you sojourn make sure you have the regalia of an athlete so that if you do find yourself in the field imagine now the flip side of the story imagine that someone gets into an olympic field carrying ak-47 rpg well dressed with the helmet and stands at the line together with the rest as soon as they say on your marks set go he starts shooting around the correct destination but the preparation is wrong then the bible says i have kept the faith this is very powerful that means there is something at the end of your life at the end of your life and destiny there are some things that should still be with you there are some things that can drop on the way childishness youthfulness but there are some things you should protect and never lose 
if at the end of the race you do not find them you lost your life you don't have to be dead to lose your life to lose your life and to lose the faith means someone would have taken your bishopric you can lose your bishopric you can lose your lampstand your place your relevance your influence very powerful information so he says, I have fought the good fight. In other words, when I began my journey, I didn't know what to expect. He's mentoring his young son in the gospel. He said, listen, you are a young man and you are going to face life in a dynamic way. Let me teach you how to prepare for life. Do not prepare only to run. You must prepare to fight and you must prepare to keep and to protect. That means your arsenals should carry the armory of a warrior, should carry the clothes of an athlete, and should carry a treasure chest, if you will allow me to use that word. Because there are some things that need to be guarded and protected. Now, there are people who see life only as a battleground. Unfortunately, when life is presented to them as a race, they are busy shooting around and wondering why they are not making progress. Because that is not the demand for that scenario. Are we together? Imagine someone who has the beautiful jewelry, gold, and all of that. He puts it in a treasure chest and keeps it somewhere outside, maybe close to the road, and says, nobody should touch it. Just leaves it open and goes away. He does not know that there are many people who desire that same thing. Are we together? And he leaves it there only to come and find that it's been taken away. I had to meditate on this scripture myself and to pray for myself. It gave me such a profound revelation. Life is a battleground, but not a battleground alone. Life is a race, but it's not a race alone. Life is a gift that must be cherished and protected. So in my preparing for life and destiny, if I find God training me like a warrior, I don't feel I'm losing because there is a place for that training. There is a point where God will suddenly change your training. Listen carefully. And you find out that in a strange way, the training has switched. But you still want the training of a warrior alone. And God says, remove all your warrior garment. Why are you on the shorts of a runner, an athlete? God, I thought I'm going to be fighting all my life. And then there are times you would come for training and the only training you will receive is how to keep things and you'll be wondering god i should be fighting there are many people because you do not know this dynamism you have refused to attend certain classes in the spirit listen carefully and it is about to become catastrophe in your life a mighty warrior is only relevant when he is in the battlefield when a warrior gets to an a, a stadium to run that warrior can be a disaster because the requirement for being a good athlete is speed agility not just the not just being a warrior are we together so this upfront is a message for you respect and discern and believe the various forms of spiritual training that god is subjecting you to are we together there are some of you when you see god training others as athletes you want to leave the battleground and just go and change your regalia and god is saying remain there the amount of time it takes to train a military officer is not the same amount of time it takes someone to run. Is that true? There are people without any training, they could run and win. But it's impossible to shoot and shoot excellently without a training. There are people who naturally, they can keep secrets. They can storm out things and keep it there. But there are people who have to be trained. My call for you tonight, listen to me. These three groups of people are scattered within this congregation this night as you are listening to me although everybody is listening to the same thing it is not the same thing the holy ghost is doing there are some people through this teaching you are receiving the training of a warrior make sure you discern there are people you are receiving the training of an athlete there are people you are receiving a training of one who needs to know how to protect what is given to him God, by this training, week in, week out, 
For some of you, you have not even started the training of a warrior. He decided to start with you on how to keep. So every time you see people praying the prayer of a warrior, you laugh. Because the level of your own training is just to protect you. Don't worry, keep the class going. Eventually. So don't be surprised. God has never told you to fast for 40 days. He has never told you to pray. It doesn't mean he won't say it. You are still in another training that does not necessitate those equipments. You will get to a point in life. For some of you, the reason why God did not start with the training of a warrior is because you had the privilege of being close to a warrior. So there are battles you didn't need to fight. Somebody else's victory, you are still enjoying it. But make no mistakes about it. There is a battle with your name on it. I have fought. I have finished. I have kept. If you fight alone, your race is incomplete. Have you finished? If you finished alone, your race is not complete. These three things must be captured in your life and your destiny. I have fought. I have finished. I have kept. Some people have fought. They even finished. But when they got to the finish line, they didn't find their soul again. What shall it profit a man? In, in the process of running, they left the major things in life. Looking for money. Looking for fame. And they lost their soul. Other people lost their bishopric. At the end of their life, when God showed them the blueprint of their destiny, they were told that they were supposed to be mighty apostles and revivalists. But they found out that they ended up being civil servants till they finished. They lost a bishopric. He says, I have kept the faith. Are we together? So when you come to church, don't come to listen to what you want. Come to listen to what, uh, listen for the things that are needed. And don't be surprised when God suddenly switches in his training with you and becomes unusually strict. He did not change. His view is another kind of training he's given you. And don't stop somebody from being trained as a warrior just because you are being trained as an athlete. Because there are times that you can see, you can be, be trained as an athlete or one who will keep secrets. And you look at the rigorous training of a military man. You can go to him and say, no, God does not train like this. My own God only trains you on how to keep things. That's a dangerous theology. Because everybody in his lifetime, you must be trained to fight. You must be trained to finish. You must be trained to keep turn it into a prayer request i obtain grace oh god the grace to submit to the training that builds me to fight i obtain grace someone is praying to submit to the training that empowers me to finish i obtain grace to submit to the training that helps me to keep and preserve my bishopric the mandate given to me in my life and destiny. Go ahead and pray. Are you praying? No eye has seen, no ear has heard. What God has prepared for me So I submit to your work in me Till Christ be formed in me ah. No eye has seen, no ear has heard What God has prepared for me So I submit to your work in me Till Christ before, no I has seen said, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me, till Christ before, no I has seen, no ear has heard. 
what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your word till Christ. One more time. No, I am sincere. God has prepared for me. Till Christ be formed in me. Till your glory is formed in me. Your wisdom be formed in me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me. That's why you are here. It's a training. For some of you here, find strength. You are going through the training of a warrior. The nature of the job description of your destiny does not just you are not just going to be keeping your bishopric there are battles to fight that you have no idea of and you have to be trained like the mighty men of david the bible says those men became mighty one of them stood in one position and fought 800 people slew them with the sword and the sword would not leave his hand someone trained him so i submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me. Yes, I submit to your work till Christ be formed in me. You can miss certain classes in the high institution of learning and you can read up during exam. There are times you may be maybe sick or you may be busy or just careless and you may not attend certain lectures. When you hear that is the time for an exam, there's what we call tutorial. And you can sit down and in three hours summarize the lecture. But in the school of destiny, any class you miss, even if it's after 30 years, you must write that exam again. You can get anointing and miss character 101 character 201 and after 30 years the absence of character 201 even though you have anointing will reduce you back you have to sit down and pass that exams you can study anointing 101 and forget finance 501 and say it does not matter the cry of your children, the cry of your wife, are we together? The cry of everything around you will bring you back to that school. Listen, it is true that no knowledge is a waste, but every time is not conducive to learn everything. Imagine a woman of 55 years wearing um, a short, you know, skirt and blouse this thing that they wear in primary school and you sit down in the midst those students are young their minds are still alive a woman of 55 years in primary school congratulations for her courage but she will most likely keep getting zero in everything because she will be sleeping when other students are alive and it is not wrong if she did what she should do she should be sleeping correctly at that time listen there are some of you I don't mean to scare you but you came to know Jesus Christ late there are some of you your family had altars you don't have any leverage of godliness to give you an edge in life some of you right now what you are learning is not even for your destiny yet what you are learning is to correct the rubbish that you met before you now start stabilizing for your destiny so when somebody whose father is a missionary whose mother is a prayer warrior whose wife is an intercessor whose first son is a prophet can he can miss service for three weeks they have these systems of advantage but for you is witches and wizards all kinds of demonic people around you and you also join to miss the service till christ be formed in me 
let me tell you in this kingdom the king's business requires haste are we together you've heard me say it takes time to know God you know let me tell you sincerely when I see the kind of attention and the laxity sometimes that believers show towards the things of God there are times that people come to church a message is preaching like this and they are browsing they are just gisting and laughing and saying in fact I'm just I'm enjoying myself honestly this place what you said is correct and they are not learning anything when you come to the house of God and the word comes anything that distracts you find out what the Bible says is the name of that thing it is the devil it doesn't matter whether it comes as whatever five minutes of accurate training being taught the word of God will give you the tools for some of you you are almost done with your training of a warrior maybe what you are receiving tonight is the helmet and you can stand and heaven can clap for you and say we can go to the next training some of you the day we gave the sword you were not there you didn't come to church and you were careless about it so you are a warrior without a sword because the day the training that gives you the sword is there you were not there and you didn't care to listen there are some of you as you are like this you are already in the battleground but you are naked from head to toe you need to listen to the things that will equip you fast because the the, the war sound is about to start and it does not care whether you are prepared or not the bible says there were cries in rama the little children were innocent but they were, did not have the training of military people and you would think life would spare them because they were children they all died man of god could it be that the teaching you are about to hear tonight is what you need for this season in the ministry for someone you are watching online and god is already speaking to you you have learned how to fight but you've not learned how to finish be careful so that you do not clap for yourself too long you can fight but unfortunately if the exam that is set before you requires an athlete you are in trouble students are allowed to read everything our school of ministry students wrote their exams i think it was last week or so a week before last and they were taught across a number of courses they would not be told what question will come out are we together the student can have an idea but as a good student you read everything when you get to the exam hall because you have read and you are vast is that true when they ask questions across several subjects you can respond but there are students who just guess where they want and just read and then they get to the exam on question one to five none of it was what they read did they read yes did they read well no i'm preparing for destiny i agree but let me see what you are doing for 10 years all you have been doing is focusing on battle you will be surprised that the fight you want to fight god has put you in a ministry where that grace will do that fight for you and by the time you'll be having your own fight you should have used the time to learn how to run so that when that battle comes your training plus the training there will give you a leverage and you simply move listen in the name of jesus i pray for you every dimension of training you need in your life you will not lose you will submit yourself and you will learn you will be thoroughly trained some of you have gone through the training of a warrior you have gone through the training of an athlete but you have not gone through the training you have not learned the dynamics of how to keep what is given to you until the end hmm. help us holy spirit that's not my message oh. that's 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 a charge I just shared with you my devotion. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now let's go to the teaching. Wherever we stop, we'll pray. I know we'll finish in Jesus' name. The roadmap to a triumphant destiny. 
the road map to a triumphant destiny tonight's teaching is very powerful and truly it will change your life the road map to a triumphant destiny hallelujah before the coming of uber and bolt people had to make do with cabs you would take a cab from one location to the other and the major trouble with that pattern of transportation was that many times the driver would have to know the location where you are exactly by head and would have to know where he needs to take you all and there are times where both the person going and the person driving don't even know where they are know where they are going are we together and so it was a serious challenge there are people who would spend over 30 minutes on a journey of 10 minutes simply because there was no accurate system of knowing the place and the advantage of you know businesses like uber and bold they did not give you a car necessarily they didn't even give you the ability to learn how to drive they introduced the gps system to make it available are we together now so that it can become a bridge that it is possible that even though by memory you may not know where your passenger or your whoever it is that that is making the order you may not know where that person needs to go but there is a device that can help connect you from where you are to where you need to be or where that person needs to be and that simple thing that was introduced has now made people to prefer that pattern of transporting themselves to a regular cab it's incredible how just introducing a system that provides a road map change the dynamics of people's appetite as far as patronizing the transport business is concerned are we together and so you see that it is not imp it is not enough to know that you have a great life and a great destiny it's important for you to know that a road map is required there has to be a road map that guides you from where you are to the place that you need to be failure to have a road map will make you lose destiny and end up in shame and end up with regrets proverbs chapter 4 from verse 18 and 19 the bible very clearly tells us that every believer in christ because in christ we are the justified we are the righteousness of god in christ jesus and the bible tells us that in christ and by reason of the provisions of redemption our path it says is as the shining light that shineth more and more you've heard me say more and more is the heritage of the saints are we together the Bible has designed a destiny or God himself has designed and revealed through scripture the more and more destiny for the believer. He says it shines more and more unto the perfect day. In Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11, it says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end so there is an expected end in fact some versions will say a future and a hope there is a future in christ there is a future for your destiny are we still together however ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15 popular scripture ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15 i hope we're still together it says the labor of the foolish weary at every one of them why because he knoweth not how to go to the city remember our uber example the man is not foolish as an insult he's foolish because he focused on the city but he did not focus on the road map the problem was not knowing that there is a city the problem was knowing how to go to the city knowing that you have a great destiny in christ is a good information but that alone would not help you actualize your prophetic destiny in Christ. Are we together? So we have a great destiny. Every one of us in Christ 
a prophetic destiny regardless the level and the area god would want to use you whether in ministry in business in government in family it does not matter we have a great destiny in christ the bible says those he foreknew he predestined are we together he called he justified and he glorified the end of the journey is your glorification now let me present to you a road map if you follow the road map that i'm about to show you tonight i give you a guarantee by the integrity of scripture that you will arrive at a triumphant destiny a destiny that is full of beauty and color that god will be so greatly glorified in your life and all through your lifetime if that is you shout a loud amen yeah. daniel chapter 11 and verse 32 very popular scripture but let's see what god has to teach us about this scripture today hmm. and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries the b part is my verse of emphasis but the people that do know their god shall be strong and shall do exploits let's read the b part together from the word but ready one to read but the people that do know their god uh-huh shall be strong and shall do exploits so this promise is for people not animals not birds not inanimate things as we know it says the people that do know their god they shall be strong and shall do exploits. Now, in biblical exegesis, please listen carefully, theologically speaking now, when you are drawing forth light from scripture, there are rules that you follow. Number one is that in, in understanding scripture, the first approach is to treat it literally. Are we together? Because more than a prophetic book, or in addition to being a prophetic book, the Bible is... A compendium that contains literature the Bible is an archaeological material the Bible is also a historical material are we together and not everything in the Bible is prophetic at plain sight there are some things that mean exactly what they say so in approaching scripture your first approach should be to try to interpret it directly verbatim as it is written if it does not make scriptural and natural sense then you would need what the Bible calls the presence of two or three witnesses. You would have to bring other scriptures that express the same thought so that you can now look at it contextually and now find out if it will make sense by combining other scriptures and then looking at the verses before or after. If it still does not make the kind of sense you want, then at that point, you will have to buy into the wisdom of the spirit of prophecy and the spirit of revelation. Are we together? To draw out the prophetic meaning. If you were asked to interpret the dream that Pharaoh had, you most likely will fail. Because I am shocked at the interpretation that Joseph gave over that dream. Are we together? That cows, fat cows, ate lean cows. How in the world does a cow mean time? How in the world does an ear of corn mean time? Uh, my first interpretation to that dream will be, Pharaoh, you are under attack. This is witchcraft. Abundance is eating poverty. That's going to be my interpretation. I'm being honest with you. And yet, Pharaoh is saying there's nothing witchcraft there. This is simply the course of time happening. So there are things that when you look at it physically, it does not make sense. But now when you approach it from a prophetic dimension, it will now make sense. Are we together? Back to this scripture. Now you will understand why I said everything I said. No, no, no. Not Exodus 40. Let's do Daniel 11 again. So it says, but the people that do know their God. Now there is a contextual meaning for this. You have to read the verses before and after. And then you fit it within the context that it was used. But because the Bible is also a prophetic book. Are we together? 
you can still draw forth a very supernatural lesson from it that has nothing to do with the context as discussed. I think this is the mistake that most people have. Sometimes theologians and people who submit themselves to learning scripture, when they see that men and women of God draw out prophetic meanings from certain scripture, they say it is wrong. No, you don't have a right to say it is wrong. It's a prophetic book. It is only that in order of priority, there is a contextual meaning. Are we together? And if you focus on the prophetic meaning and lose the contextual meaning, then you would not have done justice to that scripture. But if you understand the contextual meaning, you have the right, based on the prophetic character of scripture, to derive a prophetic meaning from it. Are we together? I'm teaching you this so that when you are listening to the message of a man of God, and you hear him say something else about his scripture. Whereas based on maybe a higher level of study, you see that mm -mm, from a contextual standpoint, that person failed. But God provided that prophetic meaning will still be able to reveal.